Hey, 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 everybody. Today we have for you podcast number 106. Today's podcast is titled, Do You Need More Time? Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of your weekly Limitless Life Network podcast. We are Dr. Pete and Sandy Lombardi, and this is the Limitless Life Network podcast where we flesh out the limitations that are preventing you from reaching your goals and living the life that you are called to lead. And we, uh, I don't know if you notice anything different about this week's podcast. If you're listening, you probably don't. Same <laughs> microphones. If you're watching on YouTube, you may notice something different. It's the background <laughs> for those of you that are just listening. But anyway, we always want to start off with our gratitude, which is thanking each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to listen to what we have to say, what God has put on our hearts, and um, probably most of you are tuning in to hear what my wife has to say. No, not true. Yeah, it's true. It's really true. People love to hear what you have to say. And uh, I want to thank all those people that mentioned to me during the week that, hey, we liked your podcast. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm a little behind. I've maybe missed one or two. No big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just glad they're that you there. listen. Yeah, we're just glad you're there. And, um, you know, if you like what you're hearing, you know, hit the like button. Leave us a comment. I love when people comment. I don't always notice them right away, but I do try to respond to comments or at least put a like next to them because... You know, that always works. <laughs> they don't go unnoticed. I do, do go back and read all the comments, so I um, appreciate that. So uh, let's get on with the show, as we okay. say. And today's topic is, uh, do you, or the title is, Do You Need More Time? And um, I think the backstory, what did the backstory come from? Mm. A couple of different things, right? Yeah, we had a lot of things going around in our conversations. Yeah, I'm just going to move your microphone. There we go. We were talking about priorities of health and whether we prioritize different things and put time into those things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we definitely have um, we have the opportunity to influence a lot of people in the way they take care of themselves in the health realm. Um, you know, running a, a wellness chiropractic center or office in, in our local community. And um you know, their problems, everybody's problems that they come in with are no different than anybody else's problems across, around the world, around the country. Uh, people have challenges and a lot of them tend to be very, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of similarities in where people have sticking points. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we um, had that last night, I think it was the case that we were discussing and an individual just want, came in because wants improvement, but isn't willing to put in any time or effort or finances into it. And it's difficult to help people uh, come <laughs> full circle until they're ready to put some skin in the game. And Sure. Yeah. Sure. So anyway, we broke some things down because, you know, some of the big objections for people to um, learning something new or taking on a new uh, challenge is time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's usually... Uh, they're not necessarily allocating time according to what their wants and their desires are. And maybe it's because their wants and desires weren't there before, so they never had to allocate time, mm -hmm. right? So usually you get into a crisis and then all of a sudden it becomes important to people. But anyway, so um, maybe you're just somebody that feels like they don't have any time. You know, you ever feel like that? Like mm -hmm. you just, there's not enough hours in the day. Right. I mean, I've mm -hmm. heard that saying mm -hmm. said before and, you know. So um, where do you spend your time is point number one. So you actually kind of came up with that one. Where do you spend your time? How, do, how, do you, how does someone figure that out? You would really have to either keep like a journal or something to look back and see day by day where you're actually putting in time. And I know personally, it, I have good intention. I have an app on my uh, phone that's my Bible reading for the day, but that will lead me to checking out Instagram and Facebook after I've done that. And it can be half an hour. And I'm like, oh, just got sucked in again and wasted 30 minutes of my day. 
Um, so looking at where we're spending our time is the first step in that. Okay. Yeah. So a time study is really like, you know, you could start one tomorrow from the time you wake up and just basically journal all day long what you do during the day. So, um, so every, you know, 15 minute period of time, what, it, what were you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, just go, go through that and, and you'll, you'll, you'll clearly see where a lot of your spine time is spent. So, um, that's, that's a really important thing to do. And it, what'll happen too, is that you'll actually start to become very aware and you'll probably stop doing a lot of the things that you're wasting time on as you do the time study. Mm-hmm. So that, that's really point number one. I, I challenge, I challenge everybody listening to do a time study for one day, one 24 hour period, do a time study. And just, I'd love to hear what your results are. I would love to hear some people share or comment like the result of that. So if you do it, if you have the gumption mm-hmm. and uh, the discipline to carry along a notebook with you for the day and detail out what you do with your time, I would love to hear what you took away from that time study. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that brings us to point number two, two which is what? What is the long term forecast based upon your current expenditure of time? So, what does uh, it look like? All right. So, this is a thought that I, you know, I came up with because if we were to do a time study, that's going to point out, you know, what we're doing with our time during the day. That's obvious. But now say nothing changes and you just continue following that model or that rhythm of the day and five years passes, what will be different? What will look the same? What will have changed? What will you be happy with that outcome? 10 years, what will that look like if nothing changes, if you kind of continue that pattern? It's 20 years, 30 years, like when you start to forecast out and look into the future, mm-hmm. what your actions are, these, and, and it's really a great point because small incremental things done for year after year after year, they produce a result. And at the end of the day, I, I would love for all of us to be very, very pleased with the outcomes in 10, 20, or 30 years from now, maybe 40, maybe 50, depending on how old you are. I don't want you to look back with regret and disappointment because of what you didn't do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, for an example, like imagine you had a really great job and you were making, you know, a six figure salary for the last, you know, 20 years, you were making, uh, you know, a really great salary and it was going up a little bit every year. But like, you know, 10 years or 20 years ago, that salary, now it's increased and say it's now, you know, you're making $150,000 currently. What do you have left out of all that? Like, what did you do? Did you invest any of that money along the way? Did you did you spend it, you know, all of it, but you, maybe you're not in debt? Did you accrue debt during that time? In other words, did you spend more than you made? Mm-hmm. You know, did you grow any of that over time? And at the end of, say, 20 years, if you have nothing saved, if you have, had never invested any money, and you look around and you're like, wow, I'm just as broke as I was mm-hmm. when I started, and I don't really have anything to show for all that time and money that I made, or do you have something to show for all that work? So um, that's just one example of mm-hmm. how time and your habits can work for you or they can work against you. Was that? I hope that, yeah. that helps that yeah. out. So, you know, think about future pace, what it would look like. Okay. So, yeah, anything else to add to that one? Well, that one hit me this morning. I am the two days in of doing a bit of a workout. I've been on a real slump in that area. And when we got talking about this, like if I'm to look out and forecast at what I was doing the last three months, what that would look like, my health would look like in 10 years. It would, that's not my deal for me. That's not where I want to head. So realizing like I need to make, it can be small changes, but I need to make changes and implement them every day. So this is relevant, I know, personally to me. Good. Yeah. Um, I I know that that's the hardest part a lot of times is for people to begin something, mm-hmm. to start again, start anew. Maybe you like exercises that way. The people have a love-hate relationship with exercise. They 
They love how they feel after they exercise. They hate getting started with exercise. And maybe they don't even like enjoy doing the exercises. Mm -hmm. So there's this love-hate relationship there. So I always tell people, you know, just start easy. Start really easy. Like start with five minutes, literally five minutes. Just get into that habit. Mm -hmm. So then long-term wise, you can build off of that. So Anyway, let's uh, let's go to point number three. Okay, so point number three is cre- create the ideal scene. Okay, so the ideal scene, and this is something I learned years and years ago from a mentor, and he talked about the ideal scene is really the perfect outcome. If you could paint a picture that was perfect, where you would be absolutely thrilled If you were to arrive at this and that was your life and that was, you know, everything about it was you, Mm. then, you know, I mean, what would make you so thrilled that you were to show up at this ideal picture? What does that look like? And it's like, how many times a day do you ever think about the ideal scene? You know, like we're so busy thinking about everything that we're doing that we never We rarely ever take the time to look into our future of what the possibilities can be. And this is something we talked about last week about what God sees in your future. He doesn't want you to look behind you all the time. He wants you to see what he sees in the future, right, for you, because he's he's got a a vision for you far grander than you can even dream of, Mm -hmm. but he's looking for you to follow him, right? And this is a part of getting you to understand that, that that you will get ideas. Like when you start to align these things, your mind is going to work in such a creative way that it's not even of you anymore. You're like, how did I ever come up with that? And it's because it becomes inspired by something greater than you. Right. And and that is just, it's exciting. It really is exciting. So creating the ideal scene in your mind's eye Getting your 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 brain to think further into the future of what is possible, what God has in store for you, um, that is just it's exciting. Mm-hmm. And uh, our pastor was talking about it last week about he just he couldn't believe like he's got all these ideas and he wishes he was you know still forty years old again you yeah. know and not seventy and because there's he feels like there's so much to do and there's so much that's possible because it it's it's not what he. You know, it's it's possible because he realizes that he's removed all these obstacles out of the way that he always thought were obstacles, mm-hmm. but there really is no obstacle. Um, but the obstacle is getting started on seeing the future. That's really that's really the first place you have to begin is to see what is it for your future. So get that going. Don't yeah. don't wait until you're seventy to try to figure out what you want your life to look like, Mm -hmm. you know, because God's called you to a purpose much greater than what you're probably stepping into right now. So that brings us to point number four, which is the next logical step. Yeah. And this is a great concept that I learned from um, uh, uh, another mentor, Sean Dill. He, He talks about this one as the next logical step. Like you say you have a goal but you're like, there's so many things to do in this goal. Like, I don't even know where to begin. All right, well, what's the next logical step? And I talked about it with Sandy in our preamble earlier. I'm like, well, if I'm going to go somewhere in my vehicle, the first logical step is to find the keys, mm-hmm. right? And then it's to get, you know, to get dressed, or okay, to walk outside, to open the door, to start the vehicle, to put it in drive. Like, there's always a next logical step to mm-hmm. going somewhere in your vehicle, it's no different for anything else. You know, if you're going to build a house, there's a, a beginning point, right? You have to like figure out like, okay, where am gonna, I going to build this house? And uh, what do I need to do to get it started? Like, who do I need to talk to? Do I need to get a builder? Do I need to get permits? Codes officer. I got to draw some sketches. I got, you have know, a plan. There's, there's always the next logical step. And what will happen is that people will not even start taking the steps because they start to think like, I don't even know where to begin. And it looks like there are a million steps, but don't worry about the million steps. Mm, Just take the first one. You've got to start taking the beginning steps, the next logical step, because yes, building a house has a lot of steps. And and, and the experience that I have is it seems like it's never going to get done. And what happens is that you take so many steps every day and eventually there's nowhere else to step because it becomes finished. You get to the end, 
right? So please, please, please don't stop. Just take the next step, Mm -hmm. right? Take the next logical step in the direction you want to head. Where do people fall short on this? Where do people, can you think of any place where people struggle on this one? Well, they may take a step, take a couple steps, something goes wrong, you get discouraged. Mm. Um, That's exactly what I was thinking. Was it? Yeah, that people get discouraged and then what do they do? Quit. (laughs) Well, one, they quit. Um, Number two is that they stay there. Mm -hmm. Right. So they tend to get so far and then they kind of just hang out there and they look around. So imagine you get in your car and you start driving and what do you do? You look down the road and then as you're driving, you get super comfortable and then you start looking at the scenery. The next thing you know, you're all, your foot's not on the gas pedal anymore. Yeah, like well, I think we can settle for something that's less than that ideal picture that we had in our mind. Like, well, I guess this will be enough. You know, this is, I did this, I got this far and just accept that as enough. But. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we could think about that with the podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, we could say, wow. We've put out over a hundred podcasts. <laughs> okay, so what what have we done with it? Well, we've we've done more than what most people ever do when they start a podcast. Is we put out a hundred and five. This is one hundred six. But so what? Like, where are we going with it? Well, it's a much further vision than right here, mm-hmm. right? So it's going to continue to grow because we're not going to take our foot off the gas. We're going to just keep showing up and keep doing it until we get further down the road. And Mm -hmm. we're going to just keep taking the next logical step. So how do we like not like get lost along the way? I think that brings us to point number five. Yeah. Because we need measurable outcomes. So it's uh, measurable outcomes or checkpoints. Okay. So we do this in our practice, in in, in our chiropractic practice, because people come in and they learn about you know, they come in with a problem usually, right? That's usually the first place, whether it's a kid with, you know, ear infections or they can't sleep or they're colicky or it's somebody that has, you know, XYZ symptom, headaches, you know, numbness in their arm, whatever it might be. Um, they start with this thing that brings them in and then we introduce them to chiropractic and all the possibilities of what it can be. So we start to show them the ideal scene, mm-hmm. right? And so nine, 30 days into care, they forget about the ideal scene and they're thinking about, oh, well, I wonder, you know, I came in with this thing in my arm and it's feeling better or it's not feeling better or it feels about the same. That's the only three things that happens. It either <laughs> feels better, feels the same, or it uh, doesn't feel better, right? So same, better, or worse. It's one of those three things. And so what do we do is we take an assessment at that point. We do a, we do a checkup to see what are the metrics, what has gotten better. What has changed? What hasn't changed? Because from that, now we can what? Reassess and make a plan forward. Right. You you reassess. And if if you have to, then you adjust what you're doing. You mm-hmm. change your plan. It's okay to alter the plan along the way. But the main thing is, is you have to revisit the ideal scene. You have to look at what the original vision was. Because if you don't, you're going to take the eye off that and you're going to look at something else. And what you're going to think about is the symptom, in this case, Mm -hmm. instead of what the possibility is for a healthier you and a healthier future, which is far more valuable than just making something quiet in your body, right? right? So that's where I don't want you to sell yourself short. And it's not just about health. It can be about your finances. It could be about your spiritual life. It could be about your marriage. It could be about raising your children, what you see for their future and the possibilities there. There's so many different areas that this applies to Mm -hmm. is creating that ideal scene. Yeah. So anything else you want to add to that one? Well, it's a very good positive exercise for all of us to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, this was a different podcast for sure. And uh, I know some people are saying, wow, you guys are getting long in the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, we were almost hitting 30 minutes. I think today we shortened it up a little bit. (laughs) So um, that's a wrap for this week's edition of your weekly Limitless Life Network podcast. Be sure to tune in each and every week so you can stay connected, be inspired, and keep moving toward your best life by stripping away your limitations. And we will see you back next week. Have a great week with our time logs. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs>